good morning everybody and big Champions League evening ahead of us. Um, actually a much bigger one than tomorrow. Tomorrow I think it's only Shakhtar Lyon that's really interesting because there is where we can get a direct spot that's still at stake. Uh, and yeah, um, we have few Europa League spots. I think Hoffenheim still has a chance in the same group, so uh, a little bit to play for, but not much, really not much. Uh, tonight we actually have uh, three spots still to play for and uh, boy is there a lot of drama. Um, Tottenham and Inter will get one of those spots. Uh, and it's actually pretty straightforward. Tottenham has a tiebreak over Inter, they are level on points. Um, Inter is therefore seemingly in the worst position, however, Tottenham has to go to Barcelona, who are already qualified. They need to win there in order to secure uh, progress to the next stage, and everyone is asking um, how serious is gonna Barcelona take this. Uh, is Messi gonna play? Who is gonna play? Will they save some uh, players? I think it's all conjecture. Uh, conjecture to me. Um, surely Barca has less to play for, but you know, uh, Barca is Barca. You never know. Uh, should Tottenham win in Barcelona, which is a tall order um, under normal circumstances, and I know Barcelona has a history of filling second string squads uh, uh, on game match day six, which they almost can do every year. So, um, like, like it or not, um, I would say Tottenham has a chance. But I'm not gonna say it's gonna go Tottenham's favor. Now, Inter needs to do their part as well and not lose. Uh, if Inter loses to PSV Eindhoven at home, uh, that's done. And I honestly have to say, after how PSV got dropped um, in the first game, they surely have something to prove. So uh, I don't think that PSV will also be a pushover. Um, my gut feeling tells me, gut feeling says Inter, honestly, although I have some hope that Tottenham will put out one of the performances that they have been known of late. That's my hope, but you know, I read yesterday, uh, hope is the death of football, because if you hope for something, it's usually not going to happen. Let's see how it goes. Uh, to me, it's kind of the second string. I mean, uh, if I had to choose, um, if the main game that I want to see tonight is not uh, gonna be uh, shown, I saw that it's gonna be shown. I'm super excited about that. Uh, I will probably pick Barcelona against Tottenham. It's the second best thing. But the big drama, of course, is at Anfield. And not only Enfield, I gotta say. Uh, first of all, Liverpool needs to win. Uh, one nil win. Uh, it could probably. They need to win, I think, by two goals. I mean, they lost one nil uh, to in order to beat Napoli. So it's Napoli has nine points. Um, PSG has eight, and Liverpool has six. Uh, which that's the tricky part. Of the whole uh, situation that um, Liverpool needs to win against Napoli to get the tiebreaker over Napoli uh, so then they would be level on nine points and since Napoli won the first match 1-0 they need to win by two goals uh, I think a 1-0 and it's even then this also would do because Liverpool then has the better goal differential because Napoli did not beat up on Gervinus Vesta as much as Liverpool did. So uh, in that case, um, still Liverpool would have the advantage. However, this is all now subject to PSG winning in Belgrade, which is not an easy task and do not take this as a given. Gervinus Vesta uh, has a draw against Napoli and they have a win against Liverpool. So winning there is not a given. And actually, 
it would make it a whole more interesting if um, Javenas Vestal put another wrench in there. I actually, uh, how to say, today it would be nice to have a conference between the two games uh, for most of the time. I probably will uh, look uh, at the results because um, that game might have a direct influence on how the other game is going. Um, just if PSG wins their throw, there's uh, no way they can be eliminated. If PSG draws, however, then they're also on nine points. And then if Liverpool wins, then all three teams will be on nine points. So that is still a possibility. Uh, and one that is super intriguing because then you need to look at the uh, direct duels between uh, the three teams and at the moment PSG and Napoli have five points um, and if that's even Napoli holds a tiebreaker thanks to two away goals in Paris uh, and Liverpool sits at three if now uh, Liverpool beats Napoli which is the only way that they can be at nine points Liverpool would have six points goes through and Napoli goes through complicated yes interesting totally i'm so much looking forward to that game now uh gut feeling tells me uh that napoli is probably gonna get the point that they need <laughs> or a result that they need i think they are they are one of those good side they are they are a really good good side i, I don't see napoli really um succumbing to the pressure i mean Liverpool is gonna get all out and honestly I think it could be one of those nights at Anfield that uh, many fear. Uh, I think it's within the range of possibility of Liverpool to beat 2-0 but whenever you have to win by two goals it's a tough ask and Napoli is too experienced of a squad meanwhile. Uh, would this have been played two or three years ago? Um, I probably would have taken... Um, I would have been more... Uh, closely aligned with um, Liverpool, but I meanwhile have the feeling that Napoli has the advantage here and they might get it and they also have the coach that can do exactly what's needed. So yeah, uh, that's how I see things going. Uh, I think now, 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 now I might get the point. Do I want the total chaos? Yes, I would love the total chaos. Uh, cannot tell you how much because uh, it might really uh, go for frantic finishes uh, but I actually think that Liverpool will not make it into the next round and I actually think it might not be the worst thing I want Liverpool to win the Premier League I want them to concentrate solely on the Premier League I even want them if they if they make it to the Europa League uh, don't play for the Europa League uh, there's no need to Go for the championship. Let's put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, really do that. And because that's the big goal. Uh, you have won the Champions League late, lately. You have not won the. You have been in the final. You have proven that they're, they're a great team. Um, just for that reason, I think there is definitely more to play more at stake for both Napoli and PSG in not advancing. I think that would be a bigger blow. Although nah, nah, Napoli I think could also probably do well in the Europa League. Uh, I, PSG is the one. If PSG gets eliminated that's gonna be drama. Uh, and to be honest uh, I would feel sorry because this will probably mean that two click gets fired before he even had a chance to make something great. Uh, and that will, would be a real shame in a way. I don't think PSG deserves uh, to win the Champions League with the way they are uh, go, going about things and you know, getting the Neymars and some of this world. However, um, it gotta be said that I don't want to be considered a failing coach that I also have to say so uh, I think he has too good of a reputation and I actually would like to see him succeed at uh, PSG and in order to succeed I think he needs to make a Champions League final at least to be not considered a failure but despite
despite me being a big PSG fan 20 years ago, uh, even 10 year, years ago, meanwhile this is uh, severely dissipated. Uh, it's not necessarily all the the Qatari money. It is also the fact that you know they have the Brazilian noodle, which I cannot stand. I really cannot stand this guy, and uh, I don't want to see. I at this moment I rather see Ronaldo with with another uh, cup than I want to see um, Neymar, and that says a lot, honestly. So. Well, that's, that's what's at stake here. Uh, I'm super excited about it. Really, really super excited about all that. Uh, I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to this game tonight. Um, I think this will be one of those, uh, the Napoli, the Liverpool Nap Napoli, this will be one of those games where I don't expect a great game, although Liverpool can give you a great game and Napoli, honestly, too. But I think that it will be a tense affair and it will leave a lot from the suspense. Uh, are you gonna make it or not? That's, uh, that's how I think about it. And so I, I see drama late unless one of the teams pulls like uh, two goals right, right, right at the beginning. I see late drama and I honestly think that PSG might succumb to the pressure as well. PSG is under pressure and playing in Belgrade is not the easiest of tasks. I hope for a fiery crowd there and a lot of pressure. Uh, again, if it goes by sympathy at the moment, it will be Napoli, Liverpool and PSG in that order. Um, if I think about the bigger picture, I really think Liverpool should not do much in the Champions League. Uh, focus on the Premier League. But you know. <laughs> I know it sounds horrible. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it, how, how it goes. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think for me the most important is that Napoli goes through. Uh, and that could also be, and I told that the way that Liverpool and Napoli go through would be that there is a draw in Belgrade. And then Liverpool wins uh, the direct duel with the six points, whereas Napoli and PSG only have five points. And uh, if that's level, then direct duel between Napoli and PSG counts, and that one is going down. I'm sure you're all gonna watch as well. I think that's the, the game, game, game to watch. Unless you have any rooting interest in the other, I think the neutrals are mostly going for that match. I probably will check the PSG result as well because um, that's the only way to know, to have full information to really appreciate it. Well, let me know what you are watching. I'm looking forward also to uh, Schachter against Lyon. Uh, else again, that's uh, Schachter needs to win against Leo. Uh, that's a direct duel, and unfortunately, it's going to be played in Kiev, uh, where you know Schachter is not very welcome in Kiev. Uh, gen gen generally, but you know, maybe the Ukrainian crowd will put that aside and will cheer for Schachter. Uh, it's going to be interesting there, too. I think that's the only other game that's worth watching tomorrow, and I'm not sure. I'm I'm looking forward to it in a way, but I'm not sure if I will actually, actually watch it. It will depend how the, day, the days go. Let me know what you'll be watching the next few days and we we'll have to talk about the Europa League, but you know, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I don't want to just get a video. There will be uh, some uh, blog posts uh, coming. I have Finland. Uh, will come today and I'm working on Norway already and then I think it will be Scotland and Greece I think some in that order somewhere uh, I hope to get them going I want to go through all these teams uh, do, uh, now rather swiftly no Romania is, Romania is uh, next. so uh, Norway then Romania which is interesting because Romania was also at the Euros so if 
finally get a team that actually played at the Euros in 2016. And I'm having a nice top 10 idea that might not take too much work, I hope. Um, is this Champions League related? Um, so let's see how that will go. Uh, and I'm not thinking about the jersey thing this time around. I actually want to see some different aspect, but uh, give me some time. Uh, easiest will to be best Champions League winning jerseys, uh, but I'm not quite there yet. Anyway, let me know what games you're watching, how you think uh, those games will go. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.